about producing HDR images in Photomatics. Uh, it would be remiss of me not to mention that, of course, HDR images can also be produced in Photoshop. So I'll just quickly show you doing the same sort of things in Photoshop. If we go into the File Automate menu, then we've got Merge to HDR here. And um, in this case, we're going to merge from some source files. You can point it at a folder, or you can choose images out of memory if you want to do it that way. But what we're going to do is do Files and Browse, and then it goes into John's example again, and choose the same images as we did before. So I'm just clicking on the first one and holding down Control and clicking on the last two. And you can see there's some of my source... Uh, sorry, there's some of my testing earlier on. So I've saved out a local contrast and a tonal compression version of this image. So I'm going to press OK on that and OK on that, and I'm going to let it load those images up. And this will take just a moment or two. Uh, what it's going to do while it does that is it's going to load them all in as separate layers, and it's going to apply the, um, the algorithm that Photoshop, uh, one of their new algorithms that aligns images, which does a wonderful job, an absolutely wonderful job. So uh, we'll just let it finish loading those layers together, and then it will pop up a window for us which is going to allow us to see the fully merged, and in just the same way as Photomatics does, uh, Photoshop is producing a, a merged 32-bit image out of all those source images. Um, oh, we've got a progress bar appearing, and we'll just give this a moment or two longer, and it will pop up that window. And we've got the Merge to HDR window has appeared. So we can see the three source images that are being used here. And uh, it's a little bit difficult to see at this size, but you can see that the the outdoor daylit bits in this darkest image... Uh, uh, sorry, this lightest image are overexposed. And in the darkest image, the shadow portions here are very much underexposed. And we can see our 32-bit merged result here in the middle. And... Um, in this case, what we're going to do is, it's telling us the next step is, we can either save it as a 32-bit per channel image, which uh, Photoshop can handle 32-bit per channel images. It's not very useful, quite frankly, because uh, your monitor really can't. Um, so if we're just going to drag this slider here, it's just saying, right, here's how I want to see it. And um, we're going to merge this down to a 16-bit per channel image, because I like to work in 16 bits per channel these days. Now, because I've chosen something other than 32-bit, the next thing it's going to do is it's going to say, OK, I've got 32 bits worth of data and you want a 16-bit image. How? How am I going to make that? So if I press OK on this, it's going to start doing the, um, the process of merging it down, but it's going to pop up a window in a moment that's going to give me some options on how to take that 32 bits worth of data and turn it into a 16-bit image. Um, and, of course, the same is also true if I was to produce an 8-bit image like we did in Photomatics. Photomatics can also do 16-bit images as well. And um, here we go. It's starting to produce the, the image for us. Now, just give it another second or two. There we go, right, window appeared off screen, just dragging it on. Um, so now you've got the HDR conversion window. Now, in the same way as Photomatics had um, f two different ways of producing this image, we had the, the tonal compression way or the uh, the local detail enhancement way. Um, the same is actually true of Photoshop, although there are four things appear on the, on the drop-down here. Um, Basically, the, there are three that, that apply a tonal, a tonal mapping to the entire image, and then there's local adaptation, which is the same thing, uh, or a very similar algorithm, to the uh, local detail enhancement. Um, so we've got a, 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 an exposure and gamma slider that allows us our own control over... Um, I'll just drag this so that you can hopefully see a bit of the image. We do have a, a tone curve and histogram here, so we can do a little bit of histogram work at the end of this process if we choose. Um, now, the exposure is going to allow us to decide where the midpoint is on the image we're going to produce. Um, and uh, Now, I haven't read up detail on this, but it seems to me that the gamma slider is telling us the breadth of values we want to take. So if I drag the gamma slider to the right, you can see it's all going a bit grey and a bit uh, uh, a bit strange looking. The reason is that we're taking a very broad range of values and squidging them into this 16-bit per, uh, bit per channel final result image. Uh, and it means that all of our useful data, which is the data in the detail of the tree and in the foreground and the wood and all the rest, is being squidged into a smaller and smaller and smaller part of the final... Um, 
result. And it, as you can see, all we're, we're left with pretty much nothing but colour data in the end. It's, the, the actual brightness values data is getting lost. So if I drag the gamma back down, uh, we can try and make once again a balance between um, having more values in there than the than the source images would naturally give us, and um, and also keeping it looking realistic and pleasing and making sure that the detail looks good. So I'm, in this case, I would say that's a pretty good place to stop. Um, just to compare the the um, the fence there against the the shadow area inside the inside the um, the wooden lean to. Um, the, the fence is looking pretty good. The the shadow area here is fairly dark, but as I said earlier, it, it should be dark. It is dark up there, and I, what I want to know is that I want to be able to see the foreground detail down here, as well alongside the brighter parts of the garden in the background. And you can see already, by the way, that the that the colour mapping here is is quite different from Photomatics. Um, so the way these things come out does look quite different depending on the different programs you're using. Um, let's just quickly rush through some of the other options here. We've got a highlight compression option. Now you can see there are no options at all for this conversion method and the reason for that is it's basically doing a similar sort of thing to the um, uh, to the exposure and gamma option but it's, it's sort of compressing the highlights um, differently. It's sort of squidging the highlights down uh, in order to try and expand the mid-range values. And this is just a standard uh, prefixed uh, algorithm that does a, a pretty a pretty darn good job. And I suggest, by the way, that when you're doing these HDRs, um, you probably do want to make the decision for yourself between uh, one of these uh, all-image conversions of a tonal mapping that, that affects the entire image or a local adaptation, uh, uh, local detail enhancement type algorithm but other than that probably flick through these see what photoshop does that um, uh, and see whether or not you like the results because the results that you're seeing here in the preview are actually a, a, an excellent representation of how it really is going to look so um equalize histogram it, this is uh, a, another fixed there are no options for this conversion method another fixed algorithm and what i believe this does is it takes the entire 32 bit histogram and uh, you know sort of chops off the parts that have got no data at all and then spreads the remaining data across the 16 or the, or 8 bit uh, final image um, sometimes that's going to look great and sometimes it's not and the same is true of the highlight compression sometimes it's going to look great and sometimes it's not in this case it looks pretty good if a little bit dark we could fix that with the toning curve and histogram, we could just just put a point in the middle there, and uh, I, don't, I don't think I can put a point in the middle there. No, okay, I, we don't have access to the histogram in this one. Um, now let's move on to the local adaptation, and um, that is going to give us. Uh, let's take away the histogram again. And now you remember I mentioned that there was a. a an option for changing the radius of the algorithm that figures out what is light and what is dark. And here, in fact, we actually have a radius slider. So if I drag that radius slider really, really down, um, then nothing visible is happening. There we go. Right, let's drag that there. And I need that at one end or the other. Yeah, so we can start to make... Um, if you can see along the edge of the, the post there, we're getting the, high, the, the halos like we did in uh, Photomatics. It's a very similar algorithm. It's trying to figure out what's bright and what's dark. And um, you can see there, this slider, what's, what's throwing me is this slider goes the other way from Photomatics. Um, so if I wanted to get uh, halos and stuff on Photomatics, I'd need to go to the left-hand end. And in this case, I need to go to the right-hand end. Um, and you can see now some quite strong haloing around the... The darker pole up the middle of the the middle of the picture here. Um, this doesn't provide you as much. Um, the the defaults in Photomatics are a pretty good starting point actually, for most of these HDRs. Um, I find the the Photoshop ones, they don't help you very much. Um, you, you kind of dropped in and, um, and 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 sort of left to say, oh, there you go. Um, figure out what looks good uh, and it's not always that easy so um, I'm finding that the threshold slider is sort of strengthening the effect of the radius um, it's it's a very tricky balance to play around with here 
Um, and at the moment I'm seeing, I think, the what I've told you before about the uh, the details in the tree here sort of getting squished down into too few values. It looks like that's what's happening in this case. So let's just see if I can fix that. You see, that's way too much. That radius is way too... You, you can see sort of uh, thick lines in the tree now, um, and that is... Clearly, it, it's not attractive. It doesn't look realistic at all. Um, and it's just because it's the radius is too large. So we need to keep our radius further down. Um, but at this this resolution, it's extremely hard to see how that final version is going to come out. So um, I'm not going to attempt to teach you how to, how to get a good one out of that um, just yet. Um, I'd like to play a lot with it more, more, more myself before I before I try and do that. But um, I did just want to show you what the different kinds of HDR algorithms were. Um, so I'm going to just press OK on that and we'll leave that for now. And we'll get back to working on Jolene's image, which is the Ophelia mother, Ophelia's mother image. Uh, we've got a last couple of steps to do on the um, clouds before we start merging them into the final image. So let's start that process. Um, we'll go into the file menu and we'll close this. I don't want to save it. Nope, I'm just I'm just noodling around here. And I'm going to open um, that image that we produced earlier, which I believe I called uh, Volcanic Clouds Final, where, wherever it's gone. There we go, Volcanic Cloud in Hawaii, HDR Final. And I'm going to press OK uh, and open on that. And um, that will just load that up. Now this is the image that we produced out of Photomatix Pro. Um, as you can see, it's it's quite dark and it's quite orangey and um, the first thing that Jolene did was to maybe back off some of those oranges just a little bit so we're going to go into the hue saturation window I'm uh, just going to bring this up let's just pop that back in and uh, just the reds and the yellows are where the main problem is so we're just going to desaturate the reds just a little bit and we're going to just desaturate the yellows just a little bit less um, and that's going to leave these blues over here alone, and they are going to start affecting the the image later on. Because remember, this is it's supposed to it's an underwater image, so the the blues are helpful to us. The the reds and the oranges give a wonderful background to the characters, but we want to keep these things sort of in balance. Um, and the blue being so dark, it is not very saturated, so we need to just keep the red reds and the yellows in balance as well. So I'm going to press OK on that, and then um, just to give it a, a little bit more boost. Um, uh, when Jolene did this herself, I, I suspect that she might have come back and done this later because I'm not sure it would have been obvious it was needed at this stage. But um, the uh, we're going to brighten it up and we're going to do what, I, what we usually do for brightening up. So we're going to make a curves layer and we're just going to press OK on it and set the blending mode to screen. And as you can see, that quite nicely brightens the image up. And remember, we can affect the amount of brightening just by dragging the opacity slider up and down. And as usual, I'm clicking on the word opacity and, and dragging to get that scrubby slider. Haven't mentioned that in a while. So there we go. Right, that is, uh, believe it or not, where we leave the HDR um, image for the clouds. And the next step is going to be to work that into the Ophelia's mother image um, as a background. <laughs> Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.